So what's the feeling like when you walk into the mounting yard on Cox Plate Day? Well, it, it all starts probably as soon as the half an hour before the Cox Plate, um, it runs rushing around like a blue ass fly. Um, we wanted all our gear all ready for the next race, all set out in case anything does happen. So the ballets are working fairly hard. Everyone's on, on edge, so to speak, and um, and then it's um, out to the parade ring when we meet all the owners and, and the trainer, and, and that's the last final bit of advice we get from our trainer before. It's between uh, horse and rider. And the leg up, when you're sitting on top of him and walking around, what's going through there? Yeah, that's probably the most exciting part because I find for myself that's when all the nerves go out the window. Um, you always you're always thinking, overthinking situations, what's going to happen in a cox plate. It's run very fast, it's a very hard race, uh, very competitive. Um, but with, a, with the likes of Team Good Off and No Stones Unturned, so we had every base covered. Um, but that, f that five minutes walking around the parade ring is like nothing else. It's, uh, for a jockey, it's what you strive for. Um, you've got your crowd, you can hear it. It's just incredible. You got people yelling for wings. You got people yelling for heart, and all. It was it was a real clash of the titans. So um, it was it was um, amazing five minutes. But that walk down the tunnel onto the track, it's like nothing else. It was just it was buzzing. There was cameras everywhere. I could hear everything. So and I was very surprised how Hartnell handled it. Actually, it was extremely good. And then when you step onto the track. Um, and you can't around in the start, what's going through there? Yeah, it's, it's more, nothing's really going through your mind at that point in time. It's just, it, because everything's thought about, you've overthought every situation that's happened, but um, it's more just seeing how the horse reacts to everything. Um, I was lucky enough to be on a horse that handled it really good. That last 10 minutes of parading is fairly intense for a horse and, and jockey, I suppose. It's, um, what's the atmosphere it, like? It's incredible. It's, Second none because it's in such tight surroundings, it makes you feel like everyone's on top of you, basically. Um, so it was pretty, fairly exciting, and uh, obviously the adrenaline starts pumping, everything's happening, and you just can't wait. So you're in the gates, and what's going through your head? I was, I was lucky, in, oh, well, I was in the gates for fairly long, so I didn't have long to think about. It was a small field. Um, I was making, my, making sure my horse partner was standing correctly. The starter goes all clear and then the gates crash open, so you've got not a lot of time to think about it. Alright, so just talk me through the race. <clears throat> so he began really good, which was obviously the key to, to getting him in a good position. Uh, we had our three dangers inside me. Um, Winks, Black Art Bart, Yankee Rose. I thought they were the three. Um, Vanamos missed it and he was our pacemaker so it was a bit concerning at this point of time about a furlong after the start he, he, he was out in no man's land so to speak and he, we had to work forward but as soon as I seen Vanamos about at the winning post that's when I knew it was all going to sort itself out and I could relax a little bit because it was the, the field was going to string out. Um, I got into a really good position. Obviously, I'm travelling a little bit wide early, but I was always going to work into a lovely position. Um, he, he relaxed really good, but the tempo was on. So here, about the 1400 metre marker, I thought I'm in a great position. He was relaxed. He was breathing well. He was balanced. And then Winks was obviously on my back. She come to me about the thousand metre marker, so I, I had a, a, a good three furlongs, beautifully rested, a couple of furlongs, so it was it was very good. But when when she did come to me, he had to quicken off the off the, off the tempo, which got him a little bit off balance, which was a little bit concerning for me because I still had another bend to go around. But um, he did that fine. He quickened up well. I was very pleased where I was. But as soon as I looked across at the 600, um, we had a white bridle come sidling up to me. Blue colours with an M on it. It was very concerning at that point of time. But uh, I tell you what, I've never felt like a, 
from the 800 to the 400, it was so exciting because I was travelling good, Winx was travelling good, and this is what everyone wanted. The big, big two finding out a finish. But um, oh, the last bend was a problem for Hartnell. He, he just never coped with it. Um, being Mooney Valley so tight, he's a galloping sort of horse that just needs big space big spaces to extend so that was the that was the disappointing thing was the last bend because that's when Winx got her biggest gap and 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 you can see the last furlong um, she wasn't getting away from us we were maintaining a good good gallop to the line so um, all being equal he's pulled up very good after the race he trotted back had a good look around and uh, I think he was he wasn't disheartened he was come through the run really good so it was a great race to be a part of and a quick word on Tuesday's race, Matt. Tuesday's race is um, very, very exciting. Obviously, uh, he's beating, he's beaten before most of the field. Um, so we've got we've got about five unknowns entering the race. He's dropping significantly in weight, which is a big thing. Second on a Cox Plate, which is outstanding form. To take Winks out of it, he wins a Cox Plate. He's, he's justified very short favourite so I thought his run in the cross plate was brilliant at weight for age level drops some weight got a right attributes to win a Melbourne Cup relaxes and got a great turn of speed back at Flemington ticks all the boxes for mine can't wait for the first Tuesday of November <laughs>